In this presentation, we're going to be entering another expense related to a purchase order. So in other words, we made a purchase order in the past requesting inventory, in our case, a guitar. We now have received it along with the bill. We're going to enter that bill as well as the payment in the form of an expense into QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Let's take a look at our objective first by looking at our flowchart on the desktop version. You'll recall once again, we are in the vendors section. We're considering we had a purchase order in the past. We made a purchase order. The purchase order has no effect on the financial statement. It's simply a request. Inventory doesn't go up. We don't make a payment at that point in time. However, we can use that purchase order to then populate either the bill or some type of payment that we're going to be receiving. So in other words, at this point in time, we have received the inventory along with a bill. We're going to be entering that information, increasing the inventory as well as the payment that we will make at this point. So I'm going to minimize this back out. We're going to go back into our QuickBooks Online. First, let's open up our reports to consider what is going to be happening here. We're going to open up to the reports on the left-hand side. We're going to be taking a look at our favorite report. That is the balance sheet report. Opening up the balance sheet report, we'll change the dates up top to or from 010120 and then to 123120, January through December. We're going to run that report. I'm then going to copy that report or duplicate that tab. We're going to duplicate the tab by or right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it as we have seen in the past. And now we're going to consider what's going to happen with regards to our balance sheet. With regards to the balance sheet, we're going to basically make a payment at this point in time for a purchase order, a request that we had in the past. Therefore, the checking account is going to be going down. We're going to decrease the checking account. Once again, we're going to say it's an electronic payment and that we're going to now enter in the system. So we know the checking account then will be decreasing. The other side then will be inventory. Inventory is going to be increasing. We're going to have to increase not just the account of inventory, but also the information related to it, tracking the inventory within QuickBooks. And we will be able to do so by selecting the item, which we have chosen for the purchase order, which will help us to populate on the um, expense form we will be creating. Back to the first tab. Uh, just to note, as we think of the purchase order process, that's going to be kind of in the expense cycle. So if we go to the expenses tab on the left-hand side, and you take a look at the expenses up top, then you'll have your information related to the purchase orders down below. And if you're searching for purchase orders directly, it's by default uh, sorted by date, as you can see on the right-hand side. If you want to look at purchase orders directly, you could basically uh, adjust the type down here so that it'll be an order by purchase order. So there's the purchase order. We have one that was uh, paid. So we have the item that was paid here and then we have the other purchase order that is still gonna be open and that's the one that we will be dealing with this time. We're gonna be dealing with the purchase order for Gibson this time. The other purchase order has been uh, populated or, or we have received the inventory and paid for it at this point in time. So now we're going to open up our form. So we're going to go up top to the new item up top. So we're going to select new and then we're going to be picking once again, we'll be looking at the ad expense. We're going to say this is an electronic payment and we have the ad expense being the form that we will be using in order to record it in the system. We're going to be dealing with inventory. So I'm going to select the inventory item so we can track the inventory as we enter this into the system. It's going to be, uh, who did you pay? We're going to be paying Gibson. So I'm going to say Gibson. I'm going to type it in there. So we have Gibson being populated and then tab. Now you'll note that the per purchase order didn't help us to populate the expense as it did before. There's no pop-up that happened on the right. Why? Because I entered two vendors in here. I misspelled a vendor. And so be careful of that. What I'm going to do then note here is I have two vendors. One's Gibson, one's Gobson. One's spelled right, one's spelled incorrectly. The purchase order got tied to Gobson. So I'm going to use that right now. Now you could go back and, and adjust the purchase order and, and fix the purchase order, but I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the purchase order to tie it out. And then possibly after this point in time, we should probably uh, make inactive one of the two uh, vendors for it. So maybe we'll take a look at that in the future. Right now, I'm going to go, uh, go forward with our activity here, which is to add this item. So now we have the purchase order 1002, which will help us to populate the expense. I'm going to go ahead and add it. So there it helps us to populate the expense. It's not under the category section up top. I'm going to minimize that. It's under the items because it's an inventory item that we purchased. There's the GSB that we had on the purchase order. There's the Gibson SB uh, description. 
quantity one the rate all this is pulling over of course from the purchase order and you see the link which is the indication of it doing so and again we're going to do the same billable option over here so you'll note that we have the customer the customer being uh music stuff store that that was on the purchase order but it's not something that benefits the vendor gibson the purchase the person we're buying the guitar from doesn't care about our customer but we populated that information into the purchase order so that when we make the expense and tie out the po it'll remind us that once we get this guitar we now have the guitar in our hands we're assuming with the actual bill that came with it and now we can contact uh music store stuff our customer in order to provide them with the guitar and fill out either an invoice or a sales receipt as we do so if we make it billable then when we create the invoice or sales receipt it'll pick up the billable amount however only at the cost amount here so it'll give us a kind of a reminder of the guitar we're selling and then we'll we'll show how that will look on an invoice and what we'll have to do to make sure we get the retail price and not not the cost as we uh charge the the customer on it now when we record this what's going to happen it's going to be decreasing the checking account and the other side is going to be going to the inventory inventory here it's also going to be increasing the inventory you know sub ledger account related to um, the type of inventory that's going up the quantity and the cost of it let's go ahead and say save and close and check that out so we're going to go save and close we're then going to go to the balance sheet tab going to refresh the balance sheet tab i'm going to close that hamburger and then i'm going to make this a little bit larger so a little bit larger at the 125 then i'm going to open up the checking account checking account should have going down i would assume it's going to go down if we go down here's the uh, gibson and the epiphone the one we just did now was uh, this 598 for the gobson so there, there it is if i open that up then we should get to our expense there it is i'm going to close that back out and then if we scroll back up top i'm going to go back to our report the other side then is going to be going to inventory if we open up the inventory asset we can see it then open up the inventory asset we see gobson once again there's the other side on the books at the 598 so that looks good i'm going to scroll back up top we can also see this on the inventory report if i go back to the first tab we're going to go to the reports down below we're going to go down to the reports and then we're going to look at the inventory valuation summary again so we're going to go inventory inventory valuation summary and we'll take a look at that report changing the dates up top to 12 31 20 gonna go ahead and run that one and what we had there was a, a gsb so the gsb is going to be this one we have one of those at the 598 598 the total in our inventory at the 2942 we go back to the balance sheet then uh, check our totals on the balance sheet for the inventory we have the 2942 